Today is May 13th edition of Back Roads of Illinois. I am Cesar Delgado. We were Central Illinois Agriculture Source and in the Midwest alongside in Central Illinois Agriculture, we are glad you're here. We were talking about agronomy practices and herbicides for today with Don Kyle from Courtland and Princeton facility. And we were going to talk about the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimate Report on today from Allendale, Inc. out of Erickson, Nebraska. I visited with Chip Nellinger from Blue Reef Agri Marketing out of Morton. They've mentioned in the world beans is turning out bearish from Friday's report from Brazil's soybean production on the report. This time is for your agricultural news and markets. We were watching for the weather models for this week in the Midwest and Central Illinois. They are saying that the farmers is getting ready for preventing planting for next week about the weather. The World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimate report from the Department of Agricultural announced that the beans are lower for Brazil is in 154. 4 million tons for Brazil because of the weather is wet weather in Brazil. In Argentina with their corn crop is lower than expected because of the pest problem. The state of Florida. They are going to be banned for cultivated meat or fake meat. The governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, is expected to sign that piece of the legislation from the House of Representatives from the state of Florida. Cultivated meat is being banned from the stores in Italy and the European Union. Cultivated meat is not safe or not healthy, according by the American Farm Bureau Federation. This is your agricultural or commodity markets update. Corn futures finished in up two to four cents. Soybean futures finished in up eight to ten cents. Wheat futures finished in up three to four cents. Now that we are going to talk about the livestock market for today on this morning, cattle finished and up two to four cents per weight feed. Their cattle finished and up two to three cents per weight. Lean hogs finished and up two to four cents per weight. We were coming with Dan Kyle from Courtland in Princeton, Illinois. Don Kyle is an agronome Sneaford Court in Princeton facility. Welcome to the show. How are you, Don? I'm doing well. How are you today, Caesar? Let's start with our conversation about the planting progress in central Illinois and northern Illinois. Could you tell our listeners about it? Yes, I sure can. This has been a spring of starting and stopping. It seems like we get a day or two in the field, and then uh, we get rain, and then uh, we're out for maybe several days and then uh -huh. we were able to plant again. So planting progress is uh, varies a lot across our area. Uh, some farmers are very close to being done with their plantings and some still have quite a ways to go and it just depends on where you're at and if you were lucky to avoid or miss some rains along the way. Yes, I watched the weather models indicate there's going to be rain. Yeah, unfortunately, it appears we're going to get some more rain here this afternoon, this evening. So uh, we'll keep looking for a dry spell where we can wrap up this planting season. Don, 
How is the corn emerging in central Illinois near Princeton and LaSalle in Peru? So the observations I have on the crop that was planted earlier back in April, emergence looks pretty good, although some fields are a little variable, but definitely we've got uh, some corn and soybeans emerging from those April plantings and even some of the early May planted crops are just starting to poke through the ground here. There's been some challenges. What do you recommend? For herbicides for soybean production on pigweeds and water hemp. Yeah, water hemp and pigweed are tough weed species, so we need to deploy multiple modes of action against uh, them for herbicides. So I always recommend we we get into the fields in the spring and get a pre-plant or pre-emergence herbicide on that has multiple modes of action. Uh, one of the products that uh, I'm familiar with and has worked well for us is using Sonic herbicide. And that has both group two and 14 uh, modes of action in it. And then with our Enlist E3 technology, you're able to use the Enlist E3 herbicide uh, program with it. And that enables you in crop to be able to use uh, both uh, the Enlist 1, 2,4-D choline, and then also glufosinate and and glyphosate tank mixed in with those. So in those high pressure areas uh, for post-emerge, definitely we recommend Enlist One with glufosinate in the tank to be able to deploy both modes of action. Beans in groups three. Yeah, so we carry a good number of uh, current soybean varieties in maturity group three with our A series product. And we've just launched a new series called Z series soybeans. We've got a number of new exciting products in uh, maturity group three. Our product pipeline is very robust in that maturity. We have some great products uh, for sale today. Could you tell our listeners about your new product from Cordva? Could you tell our audience? Yeah, absolutely. So we've launched uh, our new Z-Series soybean varieties. Uh, these new series of varieties are bringing about 2.6 bushels more than our A-Series varieties. And they're also increasing our agronomics for disease resistance and uh, stress tolerances. So they're going to bring more stability across those challenging environments or challenging years. So we're very excited about our Z-Series products. We've got products like 31Z32, 31Z03Es, and a number of other Maturity Group 3 products. And, and I think those two products that I just talked about will be very successful here in Northern and Central. For technology to the farm. Yes, absolutely. So you've got the Enlist E3 weed control technology, and then you've got the latest and most robust set of genetics we've ever launched in Pioneer's 50 years of history in the soybean business. Do you have any final thoughts about this planting season in central Illinois? Yes, I do. I hope folks are able to uh, continue to make progress planting uh, it has been somewhat of a challenging season with rain interruptions, but I think we're still in a very good spot to have a great crop this year. So I hope everybody's able to wrap up planting and get this crop off to a great start. Thank you. This is Don Kyle from Cortland in Princeton, Illinois. We were coming back with Kyle Bumstead in Erickson, Nebraska from Allendale, Inc. Welcome back to the show. I am joining with Kyle Bumstead for Allendale. How are you, Kyle, and how is your neck of the woods in Nebraska? Doing good, Caesar. I'm glad to be back. Uh, it is. Uh, we've hit a dry day here. Um, yesterday was uh, kind of cloudy and overcast on Sunday, so we celebrated Mother's Day. But uh, every planter, every sprayer, 
every piece of tillage equipment that can go on something that's dry is going and going like crazy today, planting corn and, and beans. And there's uh, quite a bit of crop to be planted yet, but uh, we're trying to get her in around the rains out here. We've got chances of rain uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday. So I think there's going to be a lot of corn planted here while we got an open window here in the next uh, 48 hours. Let's start with our conversation about the report from Friday morning from the United States Department of Agricultural. How sure. is that for the markets? Oh, I think the markets were kind of more focused on South American production than we went back to trading weather. Um, obviously, corn and soybeans ended higher, wheat ended higher. Um, I think if left to their own devices, soybeans would have been all right, close and steady to lower on Friday, but uh, the feed grains held them up there. Um, looking at this thing as a whole, I'm looking at it more of a seasonal perspective as we sit here right now. We're, uh, we've been three weeks into a nice rally, and historically, we get a nice six-week rally here in the springtime while we're in planting season. Gets everybody hyped up about summer weather. And uh, like I said, we just come through week three, and uh, this is the start of week four, and so I'm looking for a little bit more upside based off the charts and the technical pattern here, but uh, I uh, I am looking at the calendar saying, okay, this crop will get planted, and uh, I think it's time that guys need to really be looking at things here because it's a Tell me about the Conab report from Brazil's soybean production for tomorrow morning at 6 central time. Could yeah, you explain I, to our listeners about the CONAB report? <laughs> yep. I think the CONAB report, which is just like the USDA report, except it's South America, it's Brazil. Um, I think that uh, they're going to be looking for soybean production. I, I'm, I'm thinking that trade's wanting to looking for some numbers to be lowered there as far as both corn and soybeans based off the flooding issues that they've had down there. Um, recently, we've seen a little bit of a commercial business potentially through the spreads being done here in the States. So I think that that report could be a little bit friendly, albeit we were we have been higher. So it wouldn't surprise me if it comes out as a bullish report in South America that we maybe sell off just a little bit here in our in our uh, in our markets just because that may be getting kind of priced into the market a little bit. I heard that they were wet weather in Brazil. That's correct. That's correct. That's what's kind of been, uh, you know, kind of keeping the meal market propped up here a little bit. And uh, that meal market's been in turn spilling over into the outright bean market. So that's been helping things out there as far as beans go. What is your sources for this planting season in central Nebraska and the Midwest alongside in Dakotas? Yeah, that the weather models indicate more rain in the I states. Would you like to go to say about that? Oh, I think uh, I think we're a little bit early at the talk about preventive plant, but yeah, there's definitely rain in the forecast. And like I said, uh, there's a lot of corn to be planted yet in Iowa, but uh, you know, I, I think it will get planted um, here in Nebraska. Same the same thing here. A lot of a lot of corn's been in the ground. I saw some corn that was up uh, in uh, eastern Nebraska and far western Iowa here over the weekend. I saw some soybeans that had emerged too. So. We did get some planting done, and I think it, it 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 will eventually all get planted. I'm not really worried about planting delays just yet. Kyle, you're watching the cattle markets for today's market. We'll watch the bird flu is probably past, but the grill season is upon us. What is your sources for this situation? Well, I guess uh, I'm a little I'm a little concerned here. We did see uh, box beef go up here today at noon, but it's been very very tough. This is a time of year where box beef should be going up, and we just haven't gotten that rally or that sustained rally here to push things higher. So that's what concerns me a little bit is. Uh, we're not seeing that rally uh, in boxes. And uh, I think when you look at some of the outside influences here, you've got some of the major uh, fast food chains bringing back some of the cheap meal deals because they're saying that the consumer is stretched. That concerns me a little bit because they're going to be the, that's going to be their go-to then. You know, I, I, I did recently hear today on television, it was a major news source saying that uh, McDonald's is bringing back the $5 value meal or something like that. 
that's that's telling me that consumers are getting hit in the pocketbook. And so that concerns me there. I look for cash this week to be steady. Last week, we were uh, everyone thought we were extremely higher cash, but it turns out we were just about steady. So um, I would say steady cash this week here. And if we don't get some movement here in the box beef real soon, this this market's on thin ice the way it acts. Now, we did have some good movement here earlier today. The market was up, but then we sold off at the end of the day. And uh, today was the last day of the official Goldman roll. So that could have had some pressure on the market today as well. What is the price for box beef? Uh, box beef is, uh, I think last I saw was, uh, let's see, two, just under 300. I want to say it was in the 294 area, 295 area. I didn't catch the actual quote today here at noon. I'm just kind of going off of uh, what I what I remember from last week. Are you kidding? No. Uh, if we take out and violate that 295 area on the box again and uh, take out 290, then 278 on the choice box is the next area of major support. So um, there's uh, there's definitely uh, – we are kind mm -hmm. of at a pressure in this box beef market. Wow, that is pretty bearish. Yeah, that is kind of bearish. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to see that happen. Do you have uh, any final thoughts about this planting season in central Nebraska, the report? Well, I think that uh, I think we will get it all planted. We always do, um, especially here in Nebraska. And the next talk is going to be extremely hot weather. And, you know, we've got to lose this crop a few times here. I mean, obviously the frost has got to hit it and then you've got a, this uh, delayed planting and that's what right now maybe, uh, we haven't delayed it yet. We're still getting it planted, but then you've got to have the dry out, the drought that's, uh, you know, going to be the drought that kills everything. And it seems like every year we seem to raise a decent crop when uh, everyone's telling me this year is different. That tells me everything's the same and we probably need to be selling grain. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, Caesar. This is Kyle Bumstead in Erickson, Nebraska, from Allendale. We are back with our last segment on back roads of Illinois. Thanks to Don Kyle and Kyle Bumstead. Well, folks at our show for today. You can listen to our show on your favorite podcast platform, and you can catch up past episodes or interviews for this program on YouTube. And whenever you are getting your podcast, we are Central Illinois Agriculture Sources for the Midwest alongside in Central Illinois Agriculture. For Back Roads of Illinois, I am Caesar Delgado. Have a great day.